So I have the privilege of interviewing Brent Darnell. And Brent, can I get you to tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, what your field is? Well, the, the crux of it is we teach people skills to technical people. And by technical people, I mean contractors, engineers. I've worked with some IT people, some accountants. It's these people who are in technical industries, but it's a service industry. And we teach all those soft skills, and we use emotional intelligence as a foundation for all of that uh, training for these guys, and, and women as well. Wow. Brent, that sounds like in an industry that is considered pretty tough, like engineering and manufacturing and some of those interesting areas, you're teaching skills in emotional intelligence? Yeah. How do they respond to that? That amazes me. Well, the first response is always uh, total resistance. Com not a just, surprise. They, yeah, not a surprise. They, they really believe that this stuff, that, number one, they don't understand it. And number two, they see no possible relevance to them. And they think that their technical ability is, is what drives their success. And, and believe me, those things are important, especially in those technical fields. But what we've found is in a room full of very smart people with the same sort of technical ability or intelligence, the ones who are going to excel and the ones who are going to move up in their careers and the ones who are going to make the decisions and the ones who maintain great relationships with clients and stakeholders and subordinates and all that are the people with the greater levels of emotional intelligence. Okay. So it sounds like this is mostly guys. How does this relate to women? Do you, do you have women who come to I your classes? I do have some women in these classes. It's predominantly male, but um, you know what's interesting about the women in these classes? You would think that they would score drastically different in their emotional makeup and that somehow women are more empathetic or social or creating those networks, but we found that a lot of the women in these technical industries, and uh, they score pretty much the same as the men do. Okay. And so that's sort of interesting, they're mostly they're working on the same stuff, which is for most people in these technical industries, it's self-awareness, it's uh, the interpersonal skills, empathy and relationship skills and those type of skills are normally the lower scores and what they tend to work on. Okay, Brent, being married to engineer, an engineer, I know that he'd be saying, so what is this? Is this going to mean that I have to go around hugging people? Yes, we require group hugs, <laughs> actually. Uh, that's part of it. And, and everybody takes their turn in leading those group hugs. No, not really. Um, no, there's no, there, really, that's, the, that's one of the resistance points. And, and what we say is, it's nothing about that. It's, it's about managing your emotions for the best outcomes for situations. And sometimes that requires really aggressive, assertive kinds of applications. And sometimes you, you have to back off and be more empathetic, it depends on the individual you're dealing with, the situation you're dealing with, and all of those specifics. So based on being able to manage your emotions in such a way, a lot of times you get much better outcomes. And the, the default for most of the people in these construction industry manufacturing is the aggressive approach. And so this gives them a different approach and a lot of times a better outcome with a sustained relationship for better future outcomes. And that's what they're finding is they're more effective. And when that happens, these results-driven alpha male people that are in these industries, they want the results, so they really embrace it. Now, I've heard that you're having what it's called the Total Leadership Conference. Yes. What's that all about? Well, we've taken this whole emotional intelligence concept as it relates to leadership and performance, and we've really gotten great results with that. We've teamed up with a person who's developed wellness programs, and we found a real link between wellness and the emotional intelligence and leadership work. And there's even correlations with the evaluations we use, so that we find that people will uh, say peop somebody has a, an impulse control that leads to poor health habits. Uh, well, we can address the emotional part of that issue with the impulse control and the wellness part of the issue with diet and things like that, and we think we're going to get much better results. Seeing this correlation between health and wellness and the emotional intelligence 
it was a real revelation. And, and what, what we found was a lot of the people we were working with are middle-aged folks and they're starting to pay attention to health issues and starting to really, it's starting to affect how they are productively and how their energy is and how they're spending time with their family. So uh, a lot of them want to work on health stuff anyway. So we're just giving them a way to measure and improve those areas and tie it in with the emotional work to get better results. Oh, that sounds really interesting. One of the things that I've been talking about with, with some of my clients is that in succession planning, a lot of the people that are in middle management aren't people that they can move up to the senior ranks. Mm. And they just don't have the people skills. Right. Is this something that would help work on some of those? Absolutely. Issues? It's a cliche in these technical industries. You know, you get a guy that manages a process, great, right? So what do you do with that guy? Well, you promote him. Then he's managing people, not managing processes. And what happens? He doesn't do as well. He crashes and burns. He gets demoted. He gets discouraged. And he says, you know, I'm smart. I know this stuff. Why can't I do this? It's a different set of skills. And that's the kind of skills that we focus on and teach, to give them the ability to be able to do that in a very, very effective way. So for companies that are looking to move people, or if they're going out and actually doing recruiting, this seems like something that would work for their senior staff or for their middle management to put into senior staff roles. Right, well not only that, it's taking those middle managers to the senior levels, but the entry level people, that's the thing that's missing from the Gen X and now Gen Ys that are coming. They have great technical ability, they're real smart kids, they pick things up like really quickly, but it's that maturity and that level of having, you know, dealing effectively with people and with relationships that they don't have. So it's bringing them up to middle management levels in relatively short periods of time. Wow. So this is, doesn't sound like your typical course. No, it's, it's very different. And we make, we, we make fun of a little bit of traditional training courses, which are a day. And I, I, I liken it to Tiger Woods. I tell people I figured out Tiger Woods' secret to his success. Before he won his first Masters, he did a weekend seminar on golf, see? And people <laughs> laugh at that, like you're laughing now, but that's the way we approach leadership and changing our life. We go to a weekend seminar and we think we're gonna magically be transformed and change, and, and it just doesn't work that way. So our programs are a year in duration, and we found that the change actually starts, the behavior change starts about the four to five month mark. So you need that time to take that level of awareness to behavioral change. We call those other programs three ring binder programs, and we've all been there. We've, you get your three ring binder and you, you put it on your shelf and you never look at it again. And then a year later, you need the binder. So you take all the stuff out and throw it away and reuse the binder, right? So our theory is traditional training is a conspiracy theory that was um, perpetuated by binder manufacturers to sell more binders because that, that's the that's the, the biggest result we see from traditional training is lots of binders. Okay. Yeah. So if someone wanted to learn a little bit more about this, how would, where would they go? Uh, how would they, they find out? They can go to the, uh, my website, www.brentdarnell.com, and I can find out all about it, all about the methodology we use. I can, they can sign up for my newsletter, the Tough Guy Gazette. They can uh, download some chapters some, from a book I wrote called The People Profit Connection. They can do download case studies. There's all kind of information. Sounds great. Well, Brent, thanks for taking the time with me, and I'm going to look forward to learning a lot more and uh, attending the conference. Great. Thanks, Lee.